it in, in these little books. What? Hurry up. I'm almost done. You could have just waited like five more minutes. Pause for the annoying husband. He wants to walk through my video. You put that in your video. It'll be good like the beginning. Don't tell me what's good or bad on my videos, what I should do on my videos. I'm your producer. Producer. All right. Shake up a martini, pull up a chair, and let's go thrifting. This is Mid-Century Wasted. Welcome to Mid-Century Wasted. I'm Jamie. Today we have a haul video and I bought this stuff a year ago. So let's see what I got together because I don't really even remember. <laughs> Before I go any further, I just wanna let you know that it's like 105 degrees inside my house right now. That's probably an exaggeration, but that's how hot it feels because at the beach, most places, at least places that are older, don't have air conditioning. They were not built with air conditioning and we live in a rental apartment anyway and there's no air conditioning here. Most of the year you don't need it. Wonderful ocean breeze that comes through our front windows every single day and it's lovely and fabulous but right now we are in the middle of the once a year heat wave where it feels like a swamp and the breeze has just vanished. There's no ocean breeze right now. It's almost nine o'clock at night and you'll see as the video goes on, I'm just, I'm gonna be melting. I'm just gonna melt through this whole video. So you're welcome. You get to see me sweaty. <laughs> now I got a light shining on me and if I thought I was hot doing the Christmas video, that was nothing compared to this. Last summer, I was kind of going whole hog into this whole uh, thrifting, going to estate sales, acquiring, not so much um, selling. And so I, I gathered all of these shopping videos and was starting my YouTube channel. In the beginning, didn't really realize how long it took to like edit a video, you know, do a haul video, film things. I was still learning the ropes on everything. So I have actually acquired like a backlog of shopping videos from last summer. Now I'm finally getting through them because I'm not really shopping a whole lot, at least not in person right now. I'm doing a lot of the online estate sales, which are great, but there's not a, anything for me to show you. <laughs> I can't take you shopping with me while I'm just like sitting on my couch with my phone, like saying, sold. It's not that interesting. I may start hauling and showing you some of the things that I've gotten, but for now, I figure this is a perfect time to just catch up on last summer's videos and we can all live vicariously through one year ago, me, being able to just freely shop and walk into a place fully crowded and bumping elbows with people with no masks on and no social distancing. Ah, the good old days of last year. On this day a year ago, on the day that I went shopping, whatever day it was. I think it was just right about one year ago exactly. I went to two houses in Dana Point and one house in Huntington Beach on the way home. If you haven't watched the shopping video and you want to see that first, I'll try to link it if I'm capable of doing something like that. And I'll try to put it down below if I remember. If not, go to my channel and subscribe and then you won't miss anything ever. 
So let's just go in order, all right? Let's start with the crazy amount of mid-century modern, I don't even know if I would consider this mid-century modern. This is, this is mid-century kitsch is what this is. This is kitschy, 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 kitsch, mid-century barware. It's a little too wild and busy to be considered mid-century modern if you ask me. But yeah, I'll, let's just show you and you can decide. So there were multiple sets of this Georges Briard glassware, barware, drinkware, glasses, whatever you want to call it. And I had seen the pictures online of this estate sale before I went, so I knew it was there. Even though I was mentally prepared, I wasn't really mentally prepared for just how like flustered I would get being around all this beautiful stuff. And some of it I didn't look over close enough, I would say. I didn't know enough at the time to know to look really closely at the gold on the glasses. So there were multiple sets. I grabbed almost all of them, but left an entire set of eight behind. God only knows why, because looking back and looking at the video, I think that set was in the best condition out of all of them. And it was $28. And when I tell you what I paid for some of this other stuff, you're gonna be like $28 for eight glasses would have been a bet much better deal. But I was already spending so much money by the time I had grabbed all this stuff that I, I just, I was just flustered, okay? I was flustered. If I could go back in time with the knowledge that I have now, I would have done things differently. But, so if you don't know, Georges Briard was a mid-century artist, mid-century era artist. And like Dorothy Thorpe and the other really famous one whose name has escaped me at this moment, they would get the blank glasses from like Anchor Hawking or Hazel Atlas, whoever, and then put their artwork on it. So when it says Georges Briard, when it's signed, and this one isn't signed, so I'm not gonna start with that one. I'll start with this one, because it is signed. When it's signed, Georges Briard, you can see it right here in the white, and I know you can't see it very well because this camera is not designed for that, but when you see it signed, Georges Briard, he's the artist that designed the artwork on it, the outside. So first set that I picked up were these set of three tumblers, highballs, whatever you want to call them. For me, this is like the basic drinking glass. I put every kind of drink inside of this size and shape glass. And these are super, super cool. This is my favorite pattern out of the ones that I saw. This has all these different places on it. I'll just kind of spin around really closely or really slowly. Holland, what am I even, I can't even read. I have to read it like inside out. Mexico, Britain, just says Britain, not Great Britain, just Britain. Paris, Africa, Venice, Jamaica, Holland, so it has all of these different places on it and these the artwork, corresponding artwork for the places. So if you could see Norway, see how you can kind of like see through it. Here's what Norway would look like if it was in good shape because this set is in perfect condition. So you see the difference of these two squares here at the top that's those would be looking the same if they were in the same condition so good news bad news this set of four it's, and it, these are four too which is good because the other tall ones are only three set of four of these are in immaculate like never been used never seen a dishwasher that's for sure perfect condition you can see like there's this two different types of gold. If you look right here where it says Mexico, there's like a crackly kind of bubbly gold and then this really like flat, shiny, glossy gold. So cool. So first set of three were, I believe $10, $10 for the first set of three. Now catch your breath, okay? Because this kind of stuff, it, it's not cheap and I have researched this stuff. In the past, even before I went shopping at this place, I had already at this point made some really big money on selling mid-century barware, glassware online, reselling. So I knew it was kind of like, buy it now, ask questions later. <laughs> and this stuff, 
honestly in the moment I was like I love this so much I just want it so I don't even care what it's worth now again if I knew then what I know now I may not have purchased the stuff that was kind of damaged you know although these were the cheapest out of all of them and it was only only ten dollars for three so I don't know what I'm gonna do with those because they're not in great condition I'm leaning towards just keeping them. No matter what, I would definitely keep one of them. If I'm gonna sell them at all, I would sell the best two. And there is one that's pretty good and one that's like fair and then one that's really bad. So I would keep the really bad one and sell the other two. That particular pattern and these kind of shorter, fatter ones are the same pattern. It's hard to find. Now you see that, you know, HTF hard to find little tag a lot of times on things that are not hard to find. <laughs> That's kind of one of those just catchphrases, rare, hard to find. These really are hard to find. I have never seen them before. There's none on eBay. There's none sold recently on eBay. I had to go to Worth Point to even find anything that looks similar to it. The only thing I found sold years ago, not even in this same shape too. And it's, you know, we're talking 75 to $100 for a set, depending on the number of glasses involved and the more rare it is or the more desirable of a pattern it is and the better condition it's in. So these four glasses, I paid $20 for them. And I'm thinking I can probably get a hundred or maybe even more, I'm not sure. And this is like super heavy. I just, if I didn't want to make money, I would keep these in a heartbeat because that's just a really good size to drink out of. They're in perfect condition but I should sell them. I can't keep everything. I have already amassed a very large collection of gold and turquoise. And that's the thing, it's gold and turquoise and those are my bar colors. But I'll keep the kind of ruined ones and I'll sell the perfect ones. Cause if I sell these, it'll pay for everything that I got, you know, at that one house anyway. The last set were these ones that I keep holding up. Again, these ones are not in perfect shape. They have some gold loss, especially down at the bottom. And this set was $25. And I'm pretty sure it's because that one actually has the Georges Briard signature in the design. This one does not for some reason, but it is Georges Briard. I've looked it up, it's attributed to him. I really should get like a Georges Briard like reference book. I don't know if they have one on him. They probably do. They have one on like everything else. The last final Georges Briard item were these set of four shot glasses for $15 for shot glasses. That's a little bit of a lot. And it wouldn't be bad. I knew that this was supposed to be, I don't even know if you can see it, a polo player on a horse. And every single one has the exact same paint loss, gold loss on it. So looking at it, they all look the same. And I was just thinking like, I just don't know what I'm looking at. I've seen it called polo player. I don't know if that's accurate or if that's just somebody's interpretation of these, but it is a person on a horse with a mallet and they have an, I'll say like an Asian flair about them. And there's supposed to be a lot more gold on these. Now, the set of eight, that I left behind that were only $28 for eight glasses like this size, those were in this same pattern. So now that's why I'm like really kind of kicking myself that I just didn't take the complete set. I should have just taken all of them. Why would I leave behind a few? I don't understand. I'm gonna just in for my own mental health say that they were in really bad shape. I don't think they were though, but I'll just say that for myself. Okay. so. I got up and I grabbed these. The last thing was this set, cream and sugar and sugar. <laughs> That's right, two sugars and a cream. I don't know why, but they were selling all three as a set and I wouldn't have left behind just one anyway. So I'll probably sell them as a set of three. You never know, maybe people want extra sugar or maybe people have one creamer already. But again, this is another one of those things where I'm having trouble finding like comps or the same thing online anywhere for a value. These are marked, one of them, two of them are marked OMC Japan. They have the little sticker on the bottom. It was $18 for this entire set. I did find one that sold for $40 and it was a, one cream and sugar and four mugs that matched. So I don't know. So I think because 
this style is so in right now. Mid-century modern is just super popular with everyone. I think I can sell those and still do pretty well. There was one more thing I bought at that estate sale, but I don't have it to show you. It was a Zippo lighter that had a golf guy on the outside. And I bought that for Blake because he's a golf coach. He goes golfing a lot. And when he's not coaching kids and golfing, he likes to smoke cigars while he golfs. So I gave him a golf Zippo lighter and I think it's in his golf bag right now. So I can't show that to you. And for the record, I think it's gross and I don't like it, but whatever. Yet I enable him by giving him a cute Zippo lighter. All right, house number two. By far the coolest house itself, like of the actual architecture and structure of the house, the coolest one I have gone to ever in estate sales. And I've been to some fancy, fancy houses before, but this one to me was about as perfect of a floor plan as you could ever see or ever have. With the atrium in the middle, it still had a big backyard that overlooked the ocean in Dana Point, but the middle of the house, the center of the actual house was an atrium. It was open to the sky, open to the elements, to the air. So every room was kind of around like a horseshoe shape and every single room had a door open up to the, to the atrium. So there's all this natural light coming in everywhere you go. You could just cut across through the, through the atrium to get to the other side of the house without having to walk all the way around. It was just special. I loved it. That house, I actually got a little background about the owners. Um, they had not passed away, which is always nice to hear when you go to an estate sale. They were downsizing, essentially. They, together, it was a husband and wife who they moved into like a senior assisted living facility together because I guess they were getting to the age where they just couldn't really completely care for themselves and wanted some assistance. And so they just took what they absolutely needed and they sold all of these lifelong amazing possessions, which I felt happy and honored that I got to even see these things that they collected and purchase some of them. And some of them we are keeping and have had for quite a long time now. The next shopping video, we actually go back to that house and Blake comes with me. And there was something very large in the shopping video that you see just briefly in the video that I just posted and you're gonna see it again because we bought the large thing or things and we have been using them for over a year now ever since and it's pretty cool so you're gonna want to watch that next video but let's talk about what I did get by myself on the first day so I'll just go this way because I don't even remember which order I grabbed everything. So we'll just start with this set. Here's a trash can. And I, this is one of the things that I actually like forgot that I even got because it's literally been in a banker box for a year in my house. It's a trash can. Oh, apparently the Kleenex is still inside. Empty Kleenex box. Uh, so trash can, Kleenex box cover and this little like, I don't know, soap tray, trinket dish. And it's made out of like the melted little plastic beads. You know, like the little, I don't know, what do they call that? I'm sure it has like a specific term. It's kind of like a, you know, late 60s, 70s kind of, kind of vibe. I really, really like this. It's super dusty. It actually like does not smell good at all right now. Just the dust factor is intense with these. So I need to wash them up, hose them out, scrub them. <laughs> I paid $6 for the set. I think that's a great price. Oh, and hopefully by the time you're watching this video, anything that I'm planning to sell will be listed on eBay, maybe. My hope is to have things listed on eBay by the time you see the haul video. Realistically, it'll probably be by like the weekend following, you know, I'll slowly be getting things up. So if there's something that you absolutely can't live without, keep checking my eBay or send me an email and I'll just bypass eBay completely and sell it straight to you. And so I don't know, I think I'm gonna sell these, but all of the stuff from this house, I haven't even looked it up. I don't know the value of any of this stuff. 
if I have figured out value by the time I edit the video, I'll just keep putting the worth or the value across the screen. But for now, it kind of depends on if it's worth it because this is kind of bulky. It's gonna be a big box to ship it. If it's not worth like anything, then hey, I've got a new cool groovy green set for my bathroom and it'll totally fit in because I got blues and greens in my bathroom. So this, the, this set, this pair is probably my favorite thing from this house. Yeah, I'd say so. Um, these are some, oh gosh, can you, here. So you can see the shape, especially. Wrought iron or cast iron, mid-century modern candlestick holders or candle holders. There's that one and then there's this one. See the shape of that one. These, I gotta imagine, must sell for a pretty penny be just because of the shape. I don't know if there's a very specific designer who designed the shape. I haven't researched them yet. But they've got the spikes on top for the candles. This one was $5 and this one was $3. And actually looking back on the shopping video, I think like the candles that were on them came with them and I took them off for some reason. I could have just taken them, but oh well. Hopefully the next person bought the candles and loved them. So $8 for this set of amazing, amazing shape. And these are heavy. These are, you know, cast iron, wrought iron. What's the difference between wrought iron and cast iron? Having something to do with the manufacturing process? Cast iron would be cast? I don't know. So I have actually had one of these on display for a while and then kind of move things around and put put the stuff back in the boxes with the rest of the stuff in anticipation for this haul video. But now these are coming back out and they're gonna find a permanent home in my home because I really love these, love these. If I just kept these and the one set of glasses and sold everything else, I think I'd be good. Like I would be good with that, it would be fine. Well, do some shot glasses. This is one of the first things I picked up there. These were a dollar each. And these on them say, I say jolly what? And this one says, S delightful. S delightful. I think they're supposed to be, or this one anyway, is supposed to be like a little drunk dude. And you can see the eyes, the eyeballs are painted on the inside. You see? Oh, I don't know if you can see anything in there, but so there's kind of like a little 3D effect and you can, this guy's got a monocle and one eyeball inside there and it's painted on the backside. They're just very interesting. They had that, that look of like a little mid-century shot, shot glass that might be worth something. So I grabbed them and I have not yet looked them up. So hopefully they're worth something. I made a lot of money on some mid-century shot glasses last year. So when I see them and they're a buck, I pick them up. Buy now, ask questions later. Uh, this coffee mug, which I have so many coffee mugs to sell. I'm like not as excited about this anymore. But I thought this one was pretty cool because it's got this kind of, I'm sure it's not old, but it's got this kind of like retro um, Old West scene to it. And I just liked the colors and the artwork on it. I thought it was cool and it was 50 cents. So I bought it. Okay, so this was in the kitchen. I just thought that this was really, it's an oven mitt. And it's, what do you call it? A Viking. <laughs> it's a Viking. It's like, I don't know, maybe Norwegian. Is that like the blue and red cross flag? I don't know. If it was Swedish, it would probably be like blue and yellow. So, you know, close enough. I've got Swedish heritage and really cutesy Scandinavian things. I'm kind of a sucker for them. So there she is. That was... Oh, there's no price tag on that. I want to say like a dollar or two dollars. I think she might have been two dollars. And it's just cute and it's really well done. It doesn't look like it's ever been used as an actual pot holder or an oven mitt. It's a display oven mitt, if you will. Here is a little fiberglass daisy bowl. I spent three dollars on that. Um, people do eat out of these. It would This would probably be a salad bowl and there would probably be a bigger salad bowl that went with it and then lots of these little 
sellables, but this was just one and it's, it's fiberglass. It's hard fiberglass. You can see the fibers in, I mean, maybe you can't see it with my crummy camera, but you can see the fibers in the bowl. I, I just liked it. I think I can resell it, but I don't know what they're worth. I'll have to look them up. If they're only worth like, you know, five to eight dollars each, then I'll keep it. And I would actually use this as like a trinket dish because it is pretty shallow. And with just one, you know, that's kind of, it's kind of sad to have just one salad bowl with no matching ones. I'll move these guys in case these have been creeping creeping anybody out through the whole video. I don't know about these. I actually had these out on display last Christmas and my kids kept messing with them. So they've got like cat hair on them now. A little head is spinning all around. So these say made in Japan on the back on stickers. Both of them do. And they're, they have rubber faces. Oh, he lost a hand. Where'd your hand go, buddy? The hands just kind of come off because they're just felt and the feet come off too. You can see he's got wires in him. Both of them do. And there are these little elves. They're like shelf sitters and their legs are wire and they move or, or knee huggers. You can even make them knee huggers, but they're giant and they're made in Japan, but they look handmade, but they have made in Japan stickers on them. So I don't know, where did his hand go? Where did it go? It's somewhere. Oh, it's on the floor. It's on the floor. I see it. Um, but this gets like felt and this really like groovy looking fabric in there. The homeowners, the, the man of the house, the husband was like a career military guy and they lived in Japan for a significant amount of time. So all of the Asian, J Japanese um, dishes and things that were through that house, like that was all brought over when they moved back to, to the United States. These were likely bought in Japan. They say made in Japan. I mean, they're 50s, 60s all day long. Fabric, I think I'm gonna say they're more like 60s, but I might be wrong. I don't know. But either way, Elf on the Shelf comes and visits us every Christmas. And I told my son that this was, this was my elf that came. Mommy, mommy and daddy's elf. And don't touch them because they're super special. And they actually stayed in our bedroom all Christmas, which is a little weird, come to think of it. But I, I'll try to look those up. I don't know if there's gonna be anything equivalent to that to find a value of what those would even sell for. I have no idea, but they're pretty cool. I mean, they're cooler than just like the little ones and the little ones can go for some good money. So I, I don't know. Going, continuing on the kind of international thing here, um, $6 for this little wooden box, which might be a little much for this. It's probably a souvenir piece. It says Norgay on it, which is Norway. Um, I just thought it was pretty. I just liked it. I just bought it because I was drawn to it. It was probably a souvenir piece. They probably were over there, either traveling or stationed there. I mean, here's like two things that look like they were probably from Norway right together. So I don't know. I just liked the painting on it. Um, and again, Scandinavian kind of folk art. I just like it. And I, that's my, that's my one kind of offshoot that I'm always drawn to. I'm always drawn to the mid-century modern stuff, like duh, obviously, but the kind of folky Scandinavian stuff, wooden things and uh, dollar horses, things like that. I'm really drawn to that stuff too. So because that's my roots. The Swedish roots come out in me and I like that stuff. This is a little recipe book. Now this is one of those kind of typical ones that you see from that era where it's a church group or a school or some sort of organization. Members of the organization, they would all donate a recipe, they would put them together in these books and then they would sell the book as a fundraiser. So this one is a garden of recipes, Las Buenas Amigas, San Juan Capistrano. And Las Buenas Amigas is some kind of family services organization. It says strength to families under stress. Yeah, and so they sold these little recipe books and I almost always buy these whenever I see one of these because yeah, recipe books, cookbooks are good, 
but there's something kind of extra special about getting like a family recipe, something that's been tweaked for like a hundred years, passed down through generations. Stuffed grape leaves. That's probably beyond me. Holiday salad. What? Fla eggs, flour, lemon juice, dry mustard, pineapple juice, whipped cream, marshmallows, grapes, pecans, and one can of pineapple. This sounds like something that you would like expect jello to also be involved or some sort of gelatin and there is none. So, oh, but listen to this. It actually says in a shallow Pyrex baking dish, cover and refrigerate at least 12 hours before using. They actually wrote Pyrex in this one. I'm gonna have to remember that. That's really cool. Bran muffins, spiced carrot cake. Okay, I love me some carrot cake. Hot fudge sauce. All right, I'm gonna have to browse this a little, a little better. Now that I don't have to keep it stored in a banker's box, I can actually crab francais. Crab francais, sounds a little too francais for me. Clams in a half shell. All right, these San Juan Capistrano ladies had some recipes. Chili con carne, that's more like it. Brandied cranberries. Oh, hey, that was from Joyce Jensen. That was her recipe. I'll have to try her recipe. Brandied cranberries. That's, that's my kind of lady. So now I can add this to my own recipe collection. I really like collecting those little binder, you know, church and school club group recipe books. Those are, those are my jam. Oh, and I think that was $1 if I remember correctly. Here's another Kleenex tissue box cover. This one I kind of at the time had thought would be a keeper for me, but I might sell this. I paid $2 for it. Again, I'll have to just look it up and see what it's worth. It's got one weird little spot on the back here, but other than that, and it looks like, it looks like that was just kind of how it was painted. You see up at the banding at the top, it almost looks like the paint has been smudged and like a little worn on the edges, just barely. But other than that, I mean, and once it's sitting on a counter and has tissues in it, you would never notice. You could put that one weird blobby side to the back. I just thought it was really pretty with like the gold and kind of powder blue. It might look gray on the screen, but the, the grayish blue color is a little more vibrant blue. It's, it is a, a kind of a dull blue. It's not like a turquoise or anything. I mean, I might be able to make a few bucks on that if I sell it, Let's see if I can balance it. There we go. All right, so this was being kind of just sold as like a candle holder, but I now realize obviously this was like a chafing dish, just like this one is. And it should have like a little metal tray that goes in there, just like this one. Um, so that's a little unfortunate that it doesn't, but I could find something that fits in there. I'm gonna kind of leave this out now and keep my eyes peeled. I might be able to kind of piecemeal something out of this. But if not, it's still really cool mid-century lines, really cool shape to it. I believe this is probably teak wood. If it says anything on the bottom, it does not. It's got a teak look and feel. It's heavy. That was only $2. So with or without the little tray or the little metal dish, I still think that was cool and it was worth it. This one is way cooler. See the little pegs holding the the candle in there? See, it's got a little candle. I'm showing you the kind of underside first. It's got a candle that's recessed in there. And then you would take these little pegs out on the side. Like that's what's holding it in. Does it even come apart or is that just a detail? No, it doesn't even come apart. That's just a detail to resemble like, I don't know, is that like an Asian style, Japanese style? This whole thing looks kind of pagoda shaped to me. I don't know. It's just got that certain, the certain angles. And then it's got the metal dish on top. This is pretty heavy. This was $5. It says two pieces, meaning this piece and this piece. And yes, you can see my LaCroix in the picture now. Ah. So I don't know what you would put on here. 
because most chafing dishes I see, it's like a casserole dish. This is just a flat plate, pretty much, which is kind of fun and different and interesting. So I'm gonna have to look these up and see, would you put something else on top? Because the whole tray is metal, you would think the whole thing would get hot and then could even heat something else. I don't know. Do you just put like slabs of meat? You put like a steak, a big giant steak here and put it in the center of the table and cut pieces for everyone? I don't know. I'm not an expert on steak. I would love to just not turn the candle on at all and use this as like a sushi tray for the center of the table and everybody takes sushi off of it. That's what it looks like to me because it's got kind of this Asian vibe to it. But, and I may sell this, I don't know. Again, I gotta look up the value of these things first. Last thing at this house, I did buy one thing at the bust house in Huntington Beach at the end, but $2, I bought this really fun, sunny kind of raffia straw hot plate placemat. It's kind of big to be one placemat. I think it would be kind of like center of the table. You put a casserole on it. It just screams summer. I'm gonna put it on my table right now after I clean all this stuff up. I may sell it, I may not, but for a while it's at least gonna live in on my table because it kind of goes with my sunny sunflower thing I got going on in my Pyrex display and I just really liked it. I got this at an estate sale. It's marked three, $3. I believe I paid $3 for it. That is everything from that house. Now, it's not everything that I bought at that house. I did buy some other things at that house, but I bought them the next day. <laughs> so I'm not gonna show them yet. They're in holding still in banker boxes right next to me because that's gonna be part two of that house. But you gotta watch the part two shopping video first. So in the Huntington Beach chicken house, the one good thing at that house was the fireplace, the mid-century fireplace. I like those better when they're in like a bright color, like orange or yellow or red or turquoise would be amazing. And this one was brown. Everything in that house was kind of brown. It just wasn't my vibe, you guys, you know? It was very countrified. And they had a lot of stuff. They had a lot of, if you're into that look, they had a lot of cool stuff. I liked their china set that they had. It reminded me of my grandma's one that I have right here. That's why I was kind of looking at it for a while. And they had some depression, gla depression glass that was kind of nice, but... <sighs> There's a couple things outside on the little table that, oh, and I did, I did get the little, it was like a little bird nest with some moss and some fake little bird eggs in it. It was about that big and that was a dollar. And I did get that because I wanted that to put in a picture of like a cloche, you know, where it's got the wood and the glass dome that kind of goes over it the, for little terrariums or little displays and things. People use that or it's like a cheese board is what it really is. But I wanted to put something in there for my pictures on Etsy because Etsy, sometimes you gotta be a little more fancy with your pictures to catch people's attention. Not that it worked, I think it's still for sale. Anyway, neither here nor there. I bought that for photographing props, essentially. This I bought, this is some Mexican pottery and they actually had a pretty good collection of Mexi Mexican pottery. And I really like Mexican pottery. I see it a lot because I live in Southern California. I mean, there's a lot of Mexican inspired and authentic Mexican things here and I like it. I like it a lot. And I especially like the handle of this. I think that's really cool. And it's just a little pitcher, maybe a little water pitcher. Um, it was $8, you can see the tag is still on there. And it's signed on the bottom, Palomar, Mexico. And it's got like a little fish with a one in it and a bunch of other little markings. And I don't know what any of it means. And I don't know if there's any money to be made in resale for this. This was one of those things where it was kind of like, there's a huge collection of Mexican pottery. I'm gonna buy one, because there's nothing else to buy in this house anyway. I'm gonna buy one, and then that will be the catalyst to have me start researching Mexican pottery. So I'm gonna start looking up Mexican pottery and kind of get uh, a gauge on whether it sells, whether it's worthless, whether it's worth a lot, whether this is $8 for this was a good price. That's it. 
that's everything from those three estate sales. Yes, it really is. That really is everything. I feel like there's more, but it's because there is more and it's the next day. Not, not much more though. Okay, so subscribe to my channel so you don't miss the next day of shopping at that same, I called it the atrium house. I think I show it a little more extensively in the next video too. And I'm going with Blake. Blake is going to be in the next video a bit because we actually got a babysitter, aka grandma, I believe, to watch our kids. And we went out there together very early in the morning so that he could be first in line to get something very specific because it was half off day, I believe. So we go back to that house half, do half off day the next in the next video and he gets something amazing. So subscribe, hit the notification bell, comment on this video and tell me what you liked and what you hated. Tell me if you loved the chicken house and I should have bought all the roosters and you hate all this mid-century barware. And um, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching, bye.